the story is mainly about uh, four friends who uh, are kind of desperate. They have no work, and one of them has the idea because he knows people a little, and he knows uh, that people have problems with saying "I'm sorry" with excuses. So he decides, what if we open an agency where we help people to say sorry to each other? And suddenly the big firms are calling and they need this. It's really a strange concept because I don't think it's going to work in real life, but in my book it works really good. And one day they get a job offer, there sounds like a normal offer, but they discover there's a dead woman on the wall, Nate nailed to the wall, and the killer wants that they say sorry to the woman. So that's how the story starts. I, I just got an email from a woman who wants to do this. She asked me, she wants to do the agency, she wants to call it sorry, and if it's okay for me, I still have the copyrights, you know, for this. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, it can work in Japan or China, but I don't think that any rich people give a damn about guilt and about saying sorry. So it could work in the private sector, but it's, it's strange because you give the agency the right to make it good with your money. And I don't think anyone will do this. I, I think the people who got the money, they don't give a shit about if they do it wrong because they know they have the money so they don't care if someone gets dropped or some, there's a mistake. Mm -hmm. So it's a nice fantasy about truth, but I don't think it will work. Well, th there are two, two topics that are um, very important in the book because I think they represent what, what is going on in the, in the first world now, which are the... the uh, unemployment yeah. and how do you say abuso de niños? abuse of children. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, the main stories are, you know, these four guys, they're 30 years old and I'm 43, so I don't know how their situation is, but I know my friends. I have friends in this age and I see how desperate they are, you know, how uh, you know, they're a little bit lethargic because there's so much happening outside and there's too much uh, input so they fall down a little bit like it's too much to process so they know what, don't know what to do you know everyone is pushing to do something so if you have a job and you're good at it but you don't want to work for six euros so there's, there are thousands of people who want to work for five euros so you can go so you don't need to be qualified to do something you just have to be stupid to take less money or it's the other way, you have to be clever to do this, to kick them out. So they're kind of desperate because they have the feeling like it doesn't matter what you do, uh, it's not enough. So this feeling of not being capable, I think they, they turn into something passive. They don't know what to do. And uh, I like this thinking that uh, they find their own way with the agency, that suddenly they burn up and they are something great because they found a, a niche, a place where they can do this. So I like this thinking. Uh, and I like to go with my characters. And the other part, uh, the abuse of children, mm -hmm. that's for me the biggest crime that ever happened. You know, if grown-ups kill grown-ups, I don't give a damn, to be honest. But children are holy. I don't even like children. That they're too noisy, you know, they, they need too much, uh, so I don't need children for myself, but I respect them because they are the, the root of everything, and you can't touch the root that's really holy. Mm -hmm. So. When I started the novel, I never intended to write about children and abuse. It was more like I had a killer, I knew something was wrong with him, and suddenly I started to write about the kids, and I thought, oh my God, where is this going? So when I found out where it was going, when I had the first abuse, I stopped writing. I was scared of my own novel. I was never abused, and I don't know anyone who was abused, but as a writer, you have your characters inside and they all have their own story and some stories are very dark mm -hmm. and the stories of the two boys was too dark for me. So I stopped writing and for one and a half years I just wrote children's books, nice children's books, funny children's books to get away from my novel. And then I came back because you have to be true to your book, you have to be honest. So I got back to the book and I made a deal with myself, I said I'm not going to shave for <laughs> as long as I need to write the book. Mm -hmm. Four or five months, I had a beard, beard like this, <laughs> I looked really, really crazy. 
And then I came back and I finished the book. It was really tough. I didn't sleep a lot. I lived through the winter. I didn't see daylight. I was working the whole night through. I slept through the day. And it was the toughest thing I ever did. But you have to do this because you have to tribute to the characters. You have to give them all you have or you don't have to write. Mm -hmm. And you gave a, a sense of uh, complicity, complicity in in, in that uh, scene where the kids are playing Butchkasi and the Sundance Kid yeah. because they were kids when when they saw that movie. Yeah. And um, I mean, it, it, you are talking to people like your age. Yeah. I think uh, if if you do it like this, like I did in the novel, everyone gets touched by this because everyone has still like in the psychological way, there's still a child inside one. And uh, if you read this, you get closer to the children than to the grown-ups, because the grown-ups, they do their mistakes, but these kids, they didn't do anything wrong, you know, they're clean in their head, they're naive, and they're just full of life, and you kill this life, and that's the dark thing. So everyone who reads the book, at the beginning, you nail a woman to the wall, everybody thinks, oh, that's so terrible, but they don't, don't know what's coming, because this were the children, you don't see it, but it's more terrible. Uh, one thing I think is uh, maybe the difficult part from you to write the book was to implicate the four uh, friends in, in the crime. Yeah, yeah, that was a hard part because as a writer, I, I don't like police work. Yeah, so if you read all my novels, every time there comes a scene, shall we call the police? No, don't call the police. I have to keep it out because I think. In a novel like this, police work is it, it turns into a normal book, and I wanted them to solve this problem by themselves. So it was important to have one character, Chris, who pushes it, who says, "No, we will solve this. We can do this on our own because we did nothing wrong. So maybe we can do something about this." And in the end, it turns around like, "And let's see who did this. Let's see if it's going to stop. And if you see it's not stopping, you have to fight." So they start to fight. I hope this answers your question. Because sometimes I get lost in my talking. No, it was about the difficult part from you doing that. To write this. Yes. It was, it was difficult because it has to make sense for the reader. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, you can say it happens like this and this and everybody thinks, that's stupid, why are they doing this? Mm -hmm. So the hard part is pushing the sense into it so that the reader thinks, I would do it the same way. Mm -hmm. I mean, the fact if someone tells me, you have to bury a dead body, or I do this to your family, what? you don't go to the police, you don't do this. Because just as the fact they can do something to a family, it's too much. So that's what I decided. I would never go, I would never go to the police. I, I think I don't like the police, that's a fact. <laughs> I don't trust them. <laughs> yeah. How do you feel about uh, making a movie about the book? It's a good idea, but I hate movie makers. You know, because in Germany they take a long, long time. The screenplay is finished since one year, and now they're looking for a director. And in Germany, we don't have many good directors. And now they want to make it international, they want to make an American movie out of it. It's okay, but if they make an American movie, they write a new screenplay, because they want it in English, and they take the German and they turn it into English, so we get any control, we lose it. So it's like saying goodbye to an own thing, but it's okay. Because, you know, if they make a movie out of it, it's not the book. It, it shouldn't be the book, because the director makes his own version of the book. So I think it's okay, I have to let it go, and so hopefully they make something nice out of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, how was um, Barcelona and How do you like it? It's great, it's a surprise. Because last year I was in Rome, I don't travel a lot, I hate traveling, I hate looking at cities. So it's more like I go into a city to look at the cafes, to look at the people, to get the feeling of this town. I, I don't have to look at anything. And uh, we arrived two days ago, mm -hmm. it rained all the time, but we loved it. I, my muse is here, Corinna, and we walked around. And it's a nice feeling, it's really relaxed. Everybody seems to enjoy walking on the streets and there's, there seems to be no pressure. It's more like, let's walk through Barcelona the whole day. I have the feeling nobody does, does anything special, they just walk around, eat something, talk all the time, drink coffee. And I like this very much. It's like a big cafe put into a city. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>